Given how fast-paced and ever-changing the world of wrestling is, it's easy for things to get stale. Yes, with there being so many people competing for TV time, you really have to make sure you stay fresh. That, then, is why so many wrestlers work on transforming themselves at various points in their career. That's right, whether it be altering their bodies or their style, a change can help someone stay relevant for a lot longer than they otherwise would. But what are the biggest examples of this? Well, that's exactly what we're going to be looking at today. So join us as we take a deep dive into rebuilding wrestling's biggest transformations. And as always, if we're going to start anywhere, we should really do so with one of the most dramatic examples of a physical transformation in living memory, and that's the time Scott Steiner went from varsity athlete to the Hulk. Of course, Big Papa Pomp had always been a muscular guy, even during the late 80s and early 90s when he was part of a tag team with his brother Rick. That said, when he decided to go solo in 1996, things reached another level altogether when, in order to differentiate himself from everyone else in the main event scene, he decided to put on so much muscle that it would have made the Ultimate Warrior do a double take. And while it could be argued that this had a detrimental effect on his in-ring work as he was now largely unable to do the athletic stuff he had done before, it certainly made him more eye-catching and more appealing to WCW top brass. How can we be so sure of this? Well, after reaching his final form in early 1998, he joined the NWO and instantly be pushed up to the main event scene. And between then and the company's collapse in 2001, he'd go on to become a two-time television champion, a two-time United States champion, and a one-time WCW World Heavyweight Champion. Then, once that was over, he'd return to New York where, looking like Vince McMahon's dream, he'd be placed right into a World Heavyweight title program with Triple H over on Raw. And sure, this didn't work out too well for him in the long run as his sheer size made it hard for him to move, but it was also this size which arguably got him such a prominent spot in the first place. After all, wrestling has, for the most part, been the land of giants, and so being bigger is a huge help for anyone with ambitions of reaching the main event scene. And this idea has continued on well past the Attitude Era and into the modern day too, as can be seen in the sudden rise of Jinder Mahal. But how did this happen? After all, prior to his return to WWE in 2016, the Calgary native had been a comedy jobber, one whose time was filled up with Drew McIntyre and Heath Slater in 3MB. Well, if you want the real answer to this question, you only have to look at his physique before and after his initial time in New York, as over the course of his two-year hiatus, Jinder went from an athletic but not exactly overly muscular guy to peak physical condition. In short, he got absolutely shredded. And clearly, this caught the attention of Vince McMahon, a notorious body guy, as only a few months following his return, Mahal was skyrocketed up to the main event scene where, out of nowhere, he became the number one contender to Randy Orton's WWE title. But not confident with just challenging for the belt, Jinder went one further once the time for the match had came, because there, he'd pin the champion to win it for himself. And while many fans were puzzled by this decision at the time, in hindsight, it seems that the combination of WWE pushing into the Indian market, combined with the fact that Jinder now looked like a true main event superstar, meant he was considered the perfect person for the role. Hell, if nothing else, this moment gave someone who's generally regarded as one of the nicest guys backstage a chance to shine in the spotlight, and if it wasn't for his physical transformation, it may not have happened. That said, Jinder isn't the only former 3MB member who rebuilt their body and then reaped the rewards after the fact, because following his firing in 2014, Drew McIntyre returned to the UK, where he hit the gym hard in preparation for an eventual second run in New York. And again, like so many others in this video, it wasn't as if Drew was small prior to his transformation either, but the sheer amount of size he'd put on by the time he returned to WWE in 2017 meant management all of a sudden were forced to view him in a different light. How did this play itself out on screen? Well, after only four months on the NXT roster, the Scotsman dethroned Bobby Roode to win that brand's world title. And less than a year after that, he'd be called up to the main roster where he initially played the Diesel to Dolph Ziggler's Shawn Michaels. Of course, this was only going to be a temporary role though, as Vince McMahon now getting to see firsthand what the former mid-carter had transformed himself into, plans were put in place to give him a big singles push. And this all climaxed in the Scottish Warrior winning the 2020 Royal Rumble, then going on to WrestleMania 36 a few months later to defeat Brock Lesnar for the WWE title. 
Unfortunately, however, this big win would also happen right as the world was going into lockdown, so no fans were able to be in attendance for the crowning moment. And by the time they were allowed to return in 2021, Drew had lost the belt once more, with him yet to regain it again as of the time of this video's recording. But even if he's no longer the champion, he's pretty much a made man now as an upper mid-carder who can be slotted into the main event whenever the company need him. And while some may argue he deserves better, it's still a far cry from where he was before when he was stuck working undercard comedy bouts. What if, though, it isn't getting bigger which helps your career in the long run, but getting smaller instead? Sure, it might seem counterproductive if you work for WWE, but on occasion, such an attitude has paid off big time, as was the case for Gunther when he moved to America full-time in 2022. And yes, we can already hear some of you saying Gunther was just as great back when he was Walter, the Austrian ubermensch who was so powerful and devastating in his offense, he could convincingly win a match with a chop. But while this is true, it's undeniable that prior to 2022, Walter was a heavier guy. Not that he was fat necessarily, just that he didn't have the kind of physique Vince McMahon would normally push as a main event player. So perhaps realizing this, once the former NXT UK champion moved over to the US on a permanent basis in order to make a push for the main roster, he lost a ton of weight and in the process ended up being arguably even more physically imposing as a result. And that too was because now not only did he have power, but added speed and agility to the mix too, something which made him a lot more eye-catching to the boss. Of course, this led to Vince giving the man who was now being rebranded as Gunther the chance of a lifetime when he had to win the Intercontinental title not long after his SmackDown debut. And that push has carried on over into the Triple H era as well, because as it stands right now, he's the longest reigning IC champion in years and is apparently in line for a big main event push in the near future. So it just goes to show that sometimes putting on weight and muscle isn't necessarily the best thing for your career. But then if Gunther had been watching during the Attitude Era, he'd have already known that this was true, because the exact same thing happened back then with the Big Show. Yes, Paul White, someone who, given his physical appearance, should have been a shoe in for a permanent main event spot in New York. But while this certainly appeared to be the plan once he jumped there from WCW in early 1999, it quickly became apparent that his lack of desire to stay in top shape was an issue for some higher ups. So bad did it get in fact that in 2000, he'd be sent back down to developmental with instructions to lose some weight. And what made this even more embarrassing for him was that by this point, he'd already won the WWE title. But even this wasn't enough to get the job done here because over the years which followed, Big Show frequently struggled with his weight with this being something which regularly affected his in-ring performances. That was until 2015, however, as at this point, with the possibility of a WrestleMania match against Shaquille O'Neal looming, White found all the motivation he needed to shed a whole lot of pounds and look better than ever in the process. Seriously, it was like looking at a new man, one who could now move better than he had in years. But while that match with Shaq never came to fruition in the end, it still proved to be a good thing for Big Show's career in the long run, as it extended his time in the ring by a few extra years and even helped him to later get a job with All Elite Wrestling, where he currently works. And on top of that, it also allowed him to have a brief feud with the man who's also notable for transforming himself in recent years too, and that's none other than Braun Strowman. But when it comes to the monster among men, his weight loss was less to do with impressing his bosses in New York and more about rebuilding himself for his own ends, as by that point, he'd already been released from WWE and seemingly had no intention of returning again. So taking a look at the wrestling landscape then, Strowman joined forces with EC3 to create the Control Your Narrative promotion. And it was while building this that he decided he wanted to change things up and refresh himself too, with that being what led to him using intermittent fasting to shed 50 pounds from his massive frame. Of course, this had the overall effect of making him look even more shredded, and it's likely what contributed towards him being rehired by WWE once Triple H took over control of creative in 2022. Yes, since a new guard has been put in place, Braun has been brought back into the fold, now a little leaner than he was before, and all the more ready to kick ass because of it. But he's not the only person in current day WWE who's seen an image change work wonders for their career. That said, when it comes to Rhea Ripley, it wasn't adding muscle or losing weight which took her to the next level. No, she didn't need to do that. All she needed to do was change up her style, and how would she do this? Well, by fully embracing a different side of herself. 
That's right, while there was always an alternative vibe to her character, she used to have a much different style than she has now, something more akin to the likes of a Charlotte Flair. But deciding to cut her hair short, get lots of badass tattoos, and change up her ring gear, she fully reinvented her look. And this has led her to much success, as now being a former NXT Women's Champion, Tag Team Champion, and Raw Women's Champion, she's on her way to becoming an all-time great. As well as this, in more recent times, Rhea has joined the Judgment Day, with many people now looking at her as the de facto leader of the stable. And since then, now with Dom Dom by her side, she's become arguably the best thing about the entire WWE. So good in fact that at the 2023 Royal Rumble, she would enter at number one and then go on to win the whole thing, with it currently looking like a shoe in that she'll beat Charlotte Flair for the SmackDown Women's title at WrestleMania 39. Then, once that's done, the sky's the limit for the Australian star as, with her now getting so popular she's on the verge of turning babyface once more, we wouldn't be surprised to see her dominate things for years to come. And just to think, had she not made the decision to change her look up, none of this might have ever happened. But of course, sometimes it's not a wrestler who transforms themselves and in the process of doing so creates a big talking point. No, sometimes it's management themselves who do this. And if you want any evidence of that in action, you only need to look at the way Vince McMahon sculpted his physique during the Attitude Era to look better than half of his roster. And yes, this is even more impressive when you take into account the fact that by the late 90s, the boss was already in his 50s, and so putting on muscle was no easy task. But given that all Vince seems to do is work on WWE and go to the gym, perhaps it shouldn't come as a surprise that he would get so ripped eventually. Not that you would have seen any evidence of this prior to the turn of the century, however, because back then, he was just portrayed as a commentator, someone who certainly wasn't an athlete and who never showed any apparent desire to be one. But when he began feuding with Steve Austin in 1998, though, that all changed, and the first glimpse fans got of the new McMahon here came when he was due to go one-on-one -on -one with the Rattlesnake on an episode of Raw that April. And what a shock it was to see at first, because gone was the somewhat mild-mannered commentator who always wore a suit, and in his place instead was a bodybuilder who looked like he could have crushed anyone in his path. So big was he, in fact, that Austin has since gone on record saying he hated wrestling the boss, as he was in so much better shape than him and made him look bad by comparison. That said, as the years went on, Vince became less and less of an on-screen character, and as a result, his matches became less frequent too. But if you thought this meant he'd ease up on his workout regime, you'd be very wrong, because despite now being 77 years old, the chairman appears to still be in great shape. But what of the man he'd be usurping if he ever returned to take charge of creative again? Well, while he might not be as impressive of a physical specimen when he reaches his 70s, Triple H is no stranger to packing on the muscle himself, as can be seen in the way he transformed his body during the early 2000s. And like others we've mentioned today, it's not as if Triple H was small before, either. No, during the 90s he might have been leaner than he'd eventually become, but he was still ripped and well in line with the kind of physique Vince McMahon wanted out of his main eventers. Hell, so impressive was he the boss even went as far as to shoot him to the top of the card in late 1999 when he had him beat Mick Foley to win his first world title. And after that it was off to the races for the game as while the likes of Steve Austin and The Rock eased into other chapters of their lives, he remained in WWE and became, in many ways, their MVP. Of course, with Paul Levesque being a longtime fan of bodybuilding though, just being on top mentally was never going to be enough for him. And that's why, after suffering a quad tear in 2001, he'd return bigger than ever the following year as he now let his final form show. And sure, you could argue that this ended up hampering his performance in the ring, as with him no longer having that same speed and agility, his matches became more plotting as time went on. Not that they were bad, of course, it's just that they weren't on the same level they had been when he was the best in the world in 2000. But even if he was a shade below where he had been as a wrestler, it didn't stop him from conquering all around him, because with Vince McMahon being all in on his new beefier look, he'd book his son-in-law to start his now infamous reign of terror a period where he kept a stranglehold over the world heavyweight title for three full years. So it all just serves as another reminder that, if you want to be a success in New York, you're probably going to want to pack on some muscle. But what if you want to be a success in Hollywood instead as the second coming of Arnold Schwarzenegger? Well, a mere wrestler's physique isn't going to cut it for this, so you'll have to do what The Rock did when he left WWE in 2004 and pretty much double in size. 
Yes, it's crazy to look back on old footage of the Great One during the Attitude Era now and think about how big he was back then, because what he'd become in the years following would be so much bigger, it makes him look like a pebble by comparison. In fact, so large is he at present, he looks like he ate the 90s version of himself. And in getting this big, he's managed to turn himself into the premier action hero of his generation, someone who's right at home in blockbuster movie franchises such as The Fast and the Furious and Jumanji. That said, the changes to his physique never truly hit home for many fans until they saw him return to WWE in 2011, as there, during his face-offs against the likes of John Cena and CM Punk, he absolutely dwarfed them. And as anyone who's ever seen Big Match John will know, doing this is no small feat. So it's easy to see why people have since made plenty of memes about Dwayne Johnson's final Pokemon evolution being a rock itself. But it's also the size he gained which made it that much harder for him when he did come back to the ring. That's right, now far bigger than he had been during his peak years, The Rock had to sacrifice a lot when it came to what he could do athletically. And with this being partially responsible for the multitude of injuries he picked up during his WrestleMania 29 bout against Cena, it's meant he's never returned to the ring again since, unless of course you count his impromptu match against Eric Rowan at WrestleMania 32. But what about another example of someone losing weight and, in the process, extending their career by years? Who are we talking about here? Why, Bubba Ray Dudley, of course. Yes, any ECW or Attitude Era WWF fan will remember Bubba as being one half of the Dudley Boys, arguably the greatest team of all time. That said, for all the success he had during these years as a multiple-time tag team champion, it can't be denied that the stuttering Dudley didn't have the perfect physique for a Vince McMahon-employed wrestler. No, he was never ripped to shreds. And that's not a knock on his skills, it's just to say he didn't always fit the mold of a traditional WWF superstar. Of course, as he got older then and health became a bigger concern for him, he realized it might be a good idea to lose some of those extra pounds if he wanted to extend his career as much as possible. And this is what led to him gradually shedding the excess weight over the course of the 2010s, with things eventually reaching a point where he could no longer be described as the big man of the tag team division anymore. No, by comparison to what he had been, suddenly he was altogether svelte. And with this new look came a reinvigorated attitude too, as his Bully Ray character became, at different points, the top heel and face of Impact Wrestling. Then, when he and Devon Dudley jumped back over to WWE in 2015 to undergo a legacy run, he'd be able to pick up right where he left off years prior, barely having lost a step on account of his new lifestyle. Yes, whether it's getting smaller, bigger, or just changing your overall look, one thing is for sure, transformation can be the key to having a whole new coat of paint to your character.